Hi, everybody. I had no intention of coming on tonight, but I did read that um, Captain Tommy just needed to take a breath and needed a little bit of rest, and which is totally understandable. And so I figured out I'll bring my crochet hook. I'll come on, see who wants to chat, see who needs to connect. Not really planning for anything. It's one of the kind of those, well, I'll come on and then that way it gives people the ability that need to um, have a little connection tonight can. So, um, hi Sandy. I hope this helps. I saw it. We just got done having delicious prime rib. Um, and my hair is just a mess tonight, y'all, but I've been busy in the kitchen a little bit. Um, but, uh, we had a delicious, uh, prime rib and, um, uh, some shrimp and, um, so forth. So, um, and, uh, it was delicious. So we just had them with the kids and, um, I'm just pulling over, just trying to get my computer to like me for a minute. And, uh. So we had a delicious meal and uh, <laughs> they left a little bit ago and we had some fun and some laughs. And so I thought, well, I'll just hop on. I, I did put in the lifeboat group that, uh, that I was on. Those that wanted to hop on can um, see how everybody's doing. That's what the crew members, you know, that's what, that's what, what we're supposed to do as crew members fill in and hop on where need be so um i think they're not well we will do this yeah it was nice hi yarn works um that's okay i did this on totally the spur of the moment um we usually have the lifeboat um and our the person who hosts that is needing a little bit of a rest tonight so i'm just i got a channel i just thought i'll get this puppy up and running and come on and see who needs to to come in and um have a little chit chat. See how everybody's doing. I'm just letting people know that we're on. That I'm on if people need the connection. Because it's just so important. It is so important. <laughs> Somehow you, I knew you would... Well, I saw it at the last minute that um, he was not coming on. And I'm like, okay, he's not coming on. Then I need to, I can come on. If that would help anybody, then that's, that's what we're here for. You know, we're here when, um, to just lend support when it's needed. So that is what I'm doing. But I'm just sharing it so people know I am. So anyway, I'm here to help, right? <laughs> I cannot do justice in the sense of being Tommy, but at least I can come, come on and lend it. I I thought I looked at it literally like about ten o'clock, and I'm like, oh, there's no boat. Oh well, I thought, can I get this? Can my computer get up? <laughs> and get on here in about 20 minutes or will it take a half an hour for my computer to warm up but it did pretty good so I thought oh I'll just bring my crochet see who needs to chat see who needs to come on and we'll go from there so tomorrow my other's keeper is uh going to be on my channel um we're going to Oh, I'm sorry, Sandy. I didn't mean to delete that. My fingers got in the way. I am so sorry. I don't know if I can fix it. You can retype it in. I, 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 I pulled it. I, 
I pulled a cricket. <laughs> I pulled a cricket. I was trying to hit the hearts button on my phone. I hit that. I didn't mean to. Oh boy. My, I and we we say we tease somebody about their about their. Um, I don't think I can put it back in. I am so sorry. We we tease Tommy about his, you know, his fingers getting in the way. <laughs> oh boy, I did not mean to do that. Well, this is going to be a, a quite an, a quite a show. <laughs> Quite a shoe, as they used to remember. Um, who was it that used to say that? I can't remember who said it. I cannot remember who said that. Was who was that used to say big shoe, big shoe? I can't remember who said it. So anyway, but we had a nice evening. It was a nice evening, and uh, I enjoyed it. It's always fun to hang out with my kid, and I got her. An adult Easter basket, which was a dress I found someplace and gave her some, you know, some chocolate eggs. And uh, my son-in-law loves jelly beans and he also likes Skittles. So I found him jelly bean. Oh, Ed Sullivan. Thank you, Sandy. Um, I found him jelly Skittles jelly beans. So he was thrilled about that. And then we found him some kind. Hi, Kristen. I'm trying to I'm trying to help out a little bit. He just got the kid out of sleep. I figured out people are maybe missing out on the lifeboat. I can't I can't do Tommy justice, but <laughs> I'll hop on and at least be a filler in her tonight a little bit in the connection department and allow people that need to come need to have a connection point tonight to come on. So um, I found him Skittles jelly beans and he had never seen them before. And then I found him some kind of apple bourbon barbecue sauce or something like that for his Easter. So anyway, the prime rib was delicious. Now, what we didn't realize was, see, this is where you think two, two, ki two cooks in the kitchen are just a little bit too much. <laughs> because my mother thought one thing and I thought something else. This prime rib, no joke, was a third of a pound prime rib that you could put in the oven and heat. Well, we didn't realize that it was a whole one third together prime rib. We thought it was slices. So we were just expecting it to heat up in slices. No, it was a one third pound. It was so good. One third pound thing. And so it should have been in the oven like an hour before everything and we didn't realize that it literally was you know it needed to cook for like an hour so it kind of put us a little bit behind schedule um it was delicious i said i'd do it again but this time we know i was like well i thought you knew how this worked and i thought i was like i thought you looked at it and looked at the directions and she goes nope you're <laughs> I'm glad I'm not doing spreadsheets. <laughs> that reminds me. I need to get back to somebody that was doing something for me on a spreadsheet. And I totally forgot about it. Um, so we realized that the next time we need to both um, talk about this stuff. So that we're not thinking the one person got it and the one person the other. Oh, let me tell you about the other day. This was too funny. My mom, I was at uh, Ollie's. And I was looking around for just some things. That's where I found the jelly bean Skittles. And my, of course, Mocha sleeps in, in the bed. Um, um, sleeps in her bed. And so um, sometimes, especially because we have to go through such great lengths to get this dog's nails trimmed. Um, sometimes she can be a little rough on the, the comforter. So Christina had a comforter that she gave to my mom. Well, Mocha's gotten it, had a little rough with it. And she ended up like my mom stitched this thing up so many times. It's not even funny. Well, I was at Ollie's and I thought I was looking at the, the mattress, the, um, a oh, good night. 
the comforters. I thought, they're only like $40. And I thought, I'll just grab one for my mom. If she doesn't like it, she can return it. Well, I picked out, I, I was looking around, I thought, oh, this one's pretty. And then I came across this really pretty green one. It's beautiful. And I thought, well, she ain't going to like the pillow that's in here. That pillow can go to Christina. And Christina loved the pillow. But there was another little tiny pillow inside, too. It was really soft. Anxious day. I'm sorry, Sandy. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll be praying. And so anyway, the, um, the, uh, so I, I, I found this and it was the only one left. Okay, Lydia, thank you for dropping in. I appreciate it. Um, and I thought it's the only one that's left. I'll just take it home and see if she doesn't want it, she can return it. Would you believe I walked in? She goes, Mary, you're never going to guess it. She said, I was just on the Amazon in the Wayfair looking for a comforter because do you see what this dog did? It ripped a hole and she came in the bedroom and Mocha is pulling out the stuffing out of the comforter. <laughs> she said, I can't sew this thing up anymore. And she said, I was just looking at comforters on the Wayfair and on the Amazon the spooky thing about it is that she was looking in the same color that I picked up and we hadn't even talked before I got this. So I don't know if that was why we thought that we both knew what we were doing with the prime rib and we figured out, oh, it doesn't matter. The prime rib is fine. She goes, she'll never guess that I was looking at comforters and you were looking at comforters in the same color couldn't get the prime rib done right <laughs> we finally did get it but it took a little longer than, than expected and um next time we'll know better but i had to order it again i'm changing colors y'all hold on a second so I know it was, it was just crazy that she was looking for comforters. I was picked out a comforter and I picked out one in the same color. And the one I picked out, she liked better than any one that she saw on the internet. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy when we were, when there's been times, especially when I was younger, that we would literally walk out in the same color thing and we hadn't talked about what we were wearing before we went out of the bedroom that's really freaky that's freaky I'm dropping yarn all over the place here I'm dropping earbuds I'm dropping yarn boy we're just having dropsy kind of night <laughs> Sandy I hope that you're I hope tomorrow will be better I don't like for my friends to sit there and say they've had an anxious day. I'm really sorry you're going through whatever you're going through. You know you can reach out to me if you need it. Well, we also played, for those that weren't on my live, um, we also did the egg game. That's tradition in our family, and that's part of Greek culture. Where you take red eggs. You're supposed to get this special dye from Amazon. We have yet to do that, but we need to next year. Because what happens is when we dye them with regular food dye, they turn orange. So you hard-boiled eggs. Let's see. I've got dye on my fingers. Um, and you um, have a fight over these eggs. You're out now having a walk. Oh, good. I'm glad. Um, and you have these eggs and what you do is you take the pointy egg, see it on this hand too. Um, you take the pointy egg of the, 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 egg, the hard boiled egg. You take the other pointy egg and the two of you battle it out point to point and dull side to dull side. And whoever's egg is the least damaged at the end of it. We started with Christina and my mom having a battle and then we did my mom and myself cause she still had a little part of her egg that wasn't. And then I did it with me and Josh, and then Josh did it with him and Jared. Well, guess who won the battle? 
My husband did. He got the lucky egg this year, which I thought was so fitting because of this thing that's the, the upcoming court date in uh, October or in April. I said, see, you're the lucky one this year. He said, yeah. He said, I get my daughter officially, official, official, official. So he was the lucky winner this year. Last year it was Christina. This year it's Josh. I have I can't remember. It was you've been years since I've won it. So I think Jared won it lot one of these years, one of the times. But um, anyway, so that was fun. We always do that every year. I'm doing a special project for people that are going on the cruise. So I have a certain amount of numbers of things I need to make. I worked on Tommy's blanket. It's up there. Um, I got two more cards yesterday. I just have to post them in the connection project group. I um, can't remember. I think it was Barbara. And I have to look who else send it um, and let them know that I got it from the mailbox you know I'd like to understand something I don't know what's different just just let me think about this one for a minute when I go on my phone <laughs> Like today, I did a live at like 2 o'clock this afternoon. And I literally had like 16 people, 20 people in it. Sitting on your counter. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm a mess too. And I'm like, okay. But can we understand what I do on my computer? I don't understand it. I don't know whether the algor the algorithm shouldn't be any different for me going on my computer than going on my phone. But my phone, I don't know. I don't understand it. I get some people on the phone. When I go on the phone, there's some people. The ones that want to tell me that I'm homeless. And I'm I'm serious. I'm not making a joke about it. Because there are people that are homeless, and I don't think, as far as I'm concerned, there should be one person in our country not without a shelter. In any way, shape, or form. Sandy, maybe it was you that I got. I know I got one from Barbara, and I think maybe it was, I think it was you. I have to look. I was going to post it. I'm going to be, I'm going to be so sore tomorrow, you all. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to hurt like I'm... Oh, I don't even want to wake up tomorrow. I don't even want to wake up. I'm going to look right now. My box. My Rosie's right over here. That's her name. That's her name. It's Rosie. Causing my problems. Rosie. There's our Rosie. We'll see. Okay. Who was the one? Barbara. And who was this one? Let's see. I don't want to give away addresses. Sharon. Sharon Beauty uh, for Good. So those are the two that I got. Um, gotten Barbara. Autumn. Wendy. I got Kelly B's ones. I got My Other's Keeper. I got Lisa. Um, I gotta write who's on there. I forgot. I gotta write her name. So those are the ones I've gotten so far. Yep, she's Rosie. But see, that's my my daughter's middle name and Rose. But and I love roses. I just think Rose Rosie is so fitting. So that's her name. Ah. <sighs> 
But anyway. Two. No, I'm not going to start. You all do not want to hear me singing. That's for dang on sure. We're not going to have Mary sing. We, I do not have the good, a good voice. Now, the other night I told Cricket, I, t I did do my night meds early. I did do them before I went to bed. And I sang the night med song. But not as good as she does it. So. Not as good as she does it. Oh, I'm making um, a poncho. I'll show you that. And it's actually... Um, Um, where are you, Poncho? It's actually a bag a day. Um, it's a bag a day pattern. That is a poncho I'm making. I don't know if you can see it. You can see the sparkles on it a little bit, maybe? There's a little bit of a sheen to it. Right there, you can see it. But that's the poncho I'm working on. And I'm working on it for Reese. I'm working on it for Reese. So. I got that yarn from Hobby Lobby when they were doing their annual clearance sale and I I had the light green I don't have it anymore and they should they, I'm, I was sad to see that yarn go actually they don't make it anymore I don't think it's this it's this You stay. It's this. It, it looks it looks um, turquoise, but it's not. It's like, um, what do they call this? Teal green. So it's, it's a much, it's a rich green. It's like an uh, emerald or emerald green, and you can see the sparkle on it. And then this is, has like silver specks in it. And this one has gold specks. This is true to color. So it's these two together. So I'm crocheting them together. So it, it just seemed to me so fitting for Reese. And that's about the only project I can take with me. This and this other. Yeah, it looks teal on that end. But it's more of like a teal, tealish green color. But it's one of the few... Um... um projects I can actually take with me because all the other blankets I have right now are not projects that are travelable. Does that make sense? Um, none of them are travelable. Yep. So I have to have something in my crochet bag so that when I go to doctor's appointments or I do something I can take it with me. So I was like well I'll, I'll use I got that yarn on clearance but it's beautiful beautiful yarn and I thought, oh, I'll make a poncho for Reese. Yeah. Well, I liked the, I thought about just doing the one color, but I really like the two together. And I like it so much. And I'm not a green person. I'm really not. Um, but I thought, I may have to do a poncho like for myself with this color because I kind of like it. And I'm not a green person at all. I'm more of a purples and blues and pinks. So, and I did do a short for tomorrow uh, for um, the, the discussion we're going to have with my other's keeper tomorrow. Um, and the short I did uh, was, and the song I picked was Love Me Tender. Uh, but there is a very special memory I have attached to that with my grandmother. And so that's why I picked that song. I thought maybe this is a weird song to pick when you're talking about your grandmother and not somebody that, 
you know, as a boyfriend or a husband or something like that. But, um, you going to Dollywood? Um, but I, it's, I, it's a very special memory. I'll talk about it tomorrow when I talk on the show with, um, my other's keeper tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Sorry. I won't be. T I'm gonna be so sore tomorrow. I can just feel it already. I'm gonna be really tired, really sore. But I'm gonna have to pull in my horns and rest tomorrow. I will need to do so. And see the blankets that I'm doing. Um, they're all, all of them are patterns that are the kind of similar to the one I'm doing for Tommy. And they all come with this, this chart, um, kind of this, um, you know, this grid to follow. And so it's really hard to take these things anywhere. And usually in like one, in Tommy's one, I've got three different colors going in at once. So to try to organize that in a in a in my yarn bag to go take any place is not happening. You're going to Spain. Can I go in your suitcase? My mother spent a year in Spain um, when she was going through college. She has a lot of wonderful memories. She went and spent a year in college, or she spent time in college, but then she spent a year overseas in college for, uh, you know, happen. <laughs> oh gosh, I want to go to Greece. I want to go to Greece one of these days. I don't know if I'll ever make it, but my grand, my great grandfather came from Greece, and my grandmother came from Scotland. And I always wanted to to, and even my mother had offered, I always wanted to go with my grandmother back to Scotland, but she always remembered Scotland how it is, and she didn't want to go back. But I very much wanted to go back with her. She wouldn't do it. But I did go and see my Big Fat Greek Wedding 3 in the theaters for the main purposes because I felt like, you know, it's blown up on the screens. That's about as much grease as I'll probably see outside of it. But um, I'd love to go to Greece. I'd love to go to Ireland. I'd love to go to Hawaii. Yep. Unfortunately, I don't know if I could handle a plane trip. <laughs> oh, hi, Miss Dragon. I'm just kind of hopping on to see if anybody needs connection tonight because I know Tommy was was having a rest, which is fine. He works really hard. So... I thought I'd pop on on and see if anybody needed a little bit of, um, needed a little bit of connection tonight. Well, I'm sitting here just chit-chatting, talking, crocheting. 
We had a lovely dinner with my daughter and my son-in-law. And so my belly is all full. Yeah, I'm going to be ready for bed soon. She had a blast. Did you film it so I could go back and watch it? I'll have to go back and watch it if you did. I know there's no math on the show, but there's math when you crochet <laughs> a little bit. I was just busy all day. Um, I made deviled eggs and see a lot of stuff because of my fibromyalgia. I have to sit down to make because I can't stand for long. So I made deviled eggs. I made sweet potato casserole. I made uh, I, the potatoes I bought. Listen, Sam, Sam's Club has delicious potatoes mashed, and they're just as good as if you did them yourself. And if you put them in a, in a, in a, in a container or in a bowl, nobody's going to know. And they cost about $7 for two bags of potatoes. They're delicious. Best, better potatoes than I think I can make. Um, the shrimp we just heated up real quick because my son-in-law loves shrimp. Um, we had wine. Um, what else did we do? What else did we have? We had rolls. Oh, we had. Uh, I found uh, there's um, a sandwich shop near our house, it, near the church, which is about a half an hour away. And they, I found the best fried mushrooms I've ever been able to find. And so I bought them and surprised my daughter. And we loved going to, um, there's not one up here close, but the melting pot. And I did the copycat recipe for the green goddess sauce. Because she could eat that by the spoonful. To be able to dip the... Um, dip the uh, mushrooms in. It was really good. And we had bratwurst because my husband can't do meat. Yep, they're deep fried so they're already done and they're frozen but my goodness gracious they are so good. Ugh. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They are so good. I'm just making a soap caddy. I'm making the soap caddies. Thank you, Tommy, for the name. Oh, I love deep fried mushrooms. When we used to live in Florida, there was a place called Brown's Chicken. They had really good deep fried mushrooms. And they went out of business. Then there was a place, it was Taco Viva. They had the best taco salads I've ever had any place in my life. They closed too. Taco Bell couldn't, couldn't put a, whole, a candle on. I, want, I think they were owned by Taco Bell. I think Taco Bell may have had two branches. I can't necessarily remember. I just remember the, the taco salad was delicious. Delish. My computer's even fussing at me, <laughs> saying I'm working too hard. Oh, one of these days I'm going to get a new computer. This was a computer that somebody put a laptop. Um, it's a regular computer, but somebody put a laptop processor in it, and it's um, it. I'm going to need a new one eventually, but that's down the road. It works for now. I may be a little choppy at times. 
It may be a little slow, and every once in a while, it, like me, it tells me I don't want to work. <sighs> and then next, um, on Wednesday, I will be on Surviving Together. Um, and talking with her, talking with Sharon, so that would be good. Um, we will have a discussion um, uh, about my uncle. So it should be fun. Hmm. It, you know, it, it's hard to talk about, but at the same time, um, I'm thankful that my parents made sure that they protected me from a lot worse that could have happened. So if it helps somebody, it's worth it. Yep. So I will be on her channel next Wednesday, I think at 7 o'clock. But I know exactly what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm going to get up and I'm going to have my coffee. My big, I have a, may, it, end up, it may end up being the Elvis mug tomorrow, y'all. It may. And I'm just going to relax and take the day easy. Oh, in my description, I added um, coffee AM to my description. Josh and I get our coffee through them. And I thought I would share, share a link with my friends. And you get ten dollars off. The co coffee comes right to your house. Um, I it's really honestly the best coffee I have ever found. You do get rewards programs with them, and I get no joke the five pound bag of coffee and whole bean, and I grind it myself. And um, I grind it myself, um, and I I had four. I had I. I, last time I ordered 20 bags, 20 pounds of coffee, and it's lasted me like since last since December. Um, oh, it's haste. They have so many flavors, Kristen. My favorite is the um, is the vanilla cream. I did not like the vanilla. No, the French vanilla. I didn't like that one. The vanilla cream and the caramel cream are my favorite. I love flavored coffee. If it's not flavored, I won't touch it. Um, so um, those are the two that I like. But I literally get them in a five-pound bag, which cost me like $45. But they last me, like I said, I got 20 pounds of coffee and it's lasted me I think I got it in like November or something like that. I mean, it's lasted me like five, six months. Um, some night coffee, <laughs> spreadsheet, <laughs> maybe some tea instead, Kristen. But I mean, I get the bags, but then if you click on the link, you get $10 off your first order. So I figured I'd share it with you all. Um, and they have, I mean, the amount of selection of coffee there's if you can't find a coffee you like or a flavor you like forget it i mean they have got so many um and i've just because see like when i go to the store and buy because i like flavored coffee and my husband and i really like the caramel and vanilla flavors he can't have hazelnut and stuff like that because he's allergic to nuts and you're welcome oh coffee am the best coffee i found and you go and you try some of these vanilla coffees and they taste they either don't taste like vanilla or they taste so artificial now mind you i put flavor creamer in my coffee still but but they they taste so artificial rob loves flavor oh you'll find it do you they they have so many it tastes so artificial i don't like it and this doesn't taste artificial to me and my husband has acid reflux, and it's one of the few coffee companies and the coffees I can give him, and it doesn't bother his acid reflux. And I use, I, I use the coffee in his, because um, I do a lot of iced coffee for him, cold brew coffee. So I even use this coffee in the cold brew, and it's come out just fine. Um, you wish Denny's would release their coffee? We have Der Dutchman here and their house blend coffee. It's like $10 a bag for like 
16, I, I can't remember. It's not very big, but I'll treat myself to that because it's very good coffee. Their Dutchman's House blend is really, really good. But when my son-in-law asked us to marry Christina, he loves coffee. My daughter can't stand it. She's not a mom yet. <laughs> it's like, keep telling her, wait till you're a mom. You're going to need coffee. But she's never liked it. And he likes coffee. Well, they have, um, what is it? Maple, is it maple bacon? It may be maple, maple bacon. I can't remember because I haven't got bought it in a while. But I think it's maple bacon, but it's some kind of bacon coffee. And my husband loves it. He said, excuse me, he says it's very good. And um, he went ahead, we went ahead and, and got him, a, a, I think it was a pound bag of coffee grounded. And that you can even put your personal, um, like your name on the coffee bag. Or if you're giving it as a gift, you could put a little message in your name or whatever. So we ended up putting his name and then in the, in the message part on the bag, it says, yes, you know, yes. And welcome to the family. So when he said, if so, can I, can I, I'm asking for your daughter's hand in marriage. We handed him back coffee for the answer. So I think it was maple bacon coffee, but you can even put somebody's name. You can even put a personal message in there for them if you're trying to give somebody a gift with a little personal message which i really think is cute i really like it but um and they come up with specials like when i ordered those 20 pound 20 pounds of, you know the four bags of five pound coffee it just comes up to like 20 back 20 pounds they had a special and i thought i'm gonna go for the special well it's up because it'll last us five six months and it did now it's about time to order more coffee but i won't get it from any place else but if you figure out, you know, a bag of coffee lasts me and my husband, maybe I'm spending $20 a month on coffee. If you figure that a pound of coffee, two pounds of coffee may last, or a pound, or five pound bag of coffee may last me about two, two to three months. I may be spending about $17, $18, $20 on a couple a bag of coffee a month. But you can't buy coffee for less than six, seven dollars anymore anyway. And none of them in the stores are anything worth writing home about. I mean, my goodness gracious, the Barney's coffee, that white Christmas coffee, I looked at it for Christmas. It was like what, seventeen dollars? Or sixteen something or other? I'm like, it's just a little tiny bag of coffee. So I'm like, listen. I don't ask for much in life but yarn and coffee. <laughs> don't take my coffee away from me. I want my coffee in the morning. So that's that's my thing. I know that's pretty bad, but I'm like, oh. I just got so disappointed. We tried everything. We tried Dunkin' Donuts vanilla coffee. And I enjoy it from the store, but putting it through the coffee pot, I just... Sorry, I'm back. Yes, no math. Yeah. Yeah, even crummy stuff is pricey now. Yep, I agree. But, you know, they just... A lot of the flavored coffees in the store... I see, my mom doesn't like flavored coffee. She likes Seattle Best Coffee. Um, and now I get her a member's mark coffee, but she likes Se Seattle Best for a while there. But I always feel like that's too bitter. I can't stand to drink it. If I gotta drink bitter coffee and dark coffee, it means I'm having asthma issues. See, that's another thing is that coffee is a natural. Sorry, natural. Uh, nash. Na, the National or. Uh, national it's a it's a bronchiolar dilator and so people with asthma if they drink coffee it tends to help i only drink decaf but i love decaf i usually get c 
Hadley's brothers are dead man's reach. Now, I, I have to have my caffeine. <laughs> I, have to, I tried to go to tea for a while and not do without my coffee. Truly is great. I, I just can't do it. I, gotta, I just sit and I have my coffee. Now I sit and have my coffee and watch the light book. But uh, anyway. So. But um, I love their coffee. So I figured I'd put it in the description below. You all can go check it out. You don't have to. But you know. I thought I have a referral. I It's not a. Um, it's not a. I can't think of what that links are called. It's not an affiliate link, but it's just a referral link as a friend. So I figure out you all can take a look, but they've got they've got coffee flavors for days on on, on coffee am. I've tried a couple and they're my best one yet. I've never heard of Trulius. I'll have to look that up. But um, I've tried them all. I've tried, I think Seattle Best has a very vanilla flavor or something. And they just all taste so artificial. I can't stand them. So I, I've had Coffee AM for years now. And no, I, I, we were, once we found them, we were done searching. Because, see, I like having the fact that I've got a five pound bag. I hate having to go, like, I'm going to have to spend like 80 bucks for coffee for the next you know, it's 10 pounds of coffee. It'll last me four or five months. Well, maybe not four, like three or four months, somewhere around there. And I hate to spend it, but I just, I know me, I'm going to be, I'm, it's the one thing I enjoy in the morning. So I think, okay. Three hundred milligrams of caffeine for black rifle, and it doesn't phase you. Oh my goodness! No, nope. I, I, it was after. Was it after? Or it was. I just bring a big, huge cup through in the morning with two, with at least twenty-four ounces worth of coffee, and I have my big Elvis uh, jumpsuit mug. For when I need a cup of coffee. When I need a legend sized cup of coffee. You know what's crazy about it? I'm really sleepy mornings, Christine. You know what's crazy about it? Coffee will wake me up. No joke. But in the middle of the night, if I cannot get to sleep, if I have tried, if I'm having insomnia issues and I have tried everything in the book, I can go have a cup of coffee at four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning and, and so eat something and go to sleep within minutes. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's the difference between morning and evening. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Does it make sense? Because I'm like, boy, it usually should just get me riled up, and not that it, it you know, gets me too much, but wakes, why, you know, wakes me up. Nope. Nope. I have coffee in the middle of the night like that, and it'll put me to sleep. I don't understand it. There's a lot of things in my life I don't understand, and I just have to go. Okay. I think if we try to understand too much things in life, it does. For a 12 cup pot, almost a whole filter, that heart they need to move. Whole filter cup area is filled with ground. Well, you know what? I had a relative of mine. She was Auntie Nan. She had her Scottish brogue. My grandmother, when she came over to this country, decided to lose her Scottish brogue. But my aunt uh, Nan, she kept it, right? And um, she had, no joke, and I, I'm not being facetious when I say this at all. My grandmother would fix 
a pot of coffee in the morning. And that thing, and, and probably fix several pots throughout the day. The only thing this woman would drink is coffee all day long. I mean, cold, it would sit cold and she'd warm it up in the microwave. I mean, I've done that, but I mean, to just sit in all day and the only thing that she had all day long was coffee. I don't know how she did it. So, and she smoked cigarettes. So she smoked cigarettes and had coffee. I, literally, cup after cup after cup after cup. She lived to, to be in her 80s. So, I don't know. She was a tough Scottish woman, that's for sure. She used to sing this song, and I'm not going to sing it to you, but it was, Swing me up a little bit higher, Obadiah do. Swing me up a little bit higher, like you used to do. Swing me up to the garden wall. Swing me up so I will not fall. Swing me up a little bit higher, Obadiah do. And she, my grandmother had a swing, and she used to swing me singing that song. That's about as close as you're going to ever get this girl to sing. <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah, Kristen said her mom uh, said her parents did that. Drank coffee all day long and smoked cigarettes. Well, my grandmother, she lived to be in her 90s. and She didn't smoke, but all of her relatives did. Except for my Aunt Irene, they all died uh, pretty young in age. That was my mom's uh, beverage of choice. She is smoking like a chimney and lived to be 92. Amazing. I think that some of it's genetic. And I do believe God says you will be here this amount of time to this amount of time. And uh, that's what I truly feel like. So, you know, I, I hope that when, you know, I hope none of us can, none of us, and none, no channel can ever be the lifeboat. Uh, there's only one, there's only one Captain Tommy, but I hope that some channels like me, that if Tommy's not able to come on one night, we can do this. So that people, you know, somebody can say, hey, let's, let's hit that, that let's hit, you know, he can't for whatever reason, and that's fine. And, and let's have someone else, someone else going to be alive that can take over and, and, and just be there as far as a connection point. We can't be Tommy. We're not trying to be him. We're not trying to be the lifeboat. We're just trying to be a connection point. And, uh, I really hope that because... It's so important. We've got some of these channels popping up. And um, if I ever see and can, well, oh, well, I'm glad, Sandy. That warms my heart. That makes my night. Um, if I ever see that for some reason he's unable to come on and I can, I will do my very best to pop on. Because I think that, that if we have the ability to... Then we need to. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Sandy, I hope that if you're stressing that, you know, please feel free to reach out to, to somebody just to talk. Maybe it's just to, to say a prayer. Um, if I start that one, I'll be uneven. Um, on my count. Um, if I start another one, another soap saver, soap, soap caddy, I changed the name in my head. I just, just hope, just hope that you're reaching out to people. Um, because that's one thing I want to talk to you about on Monday is I'm going to do, um, I'm going to schedule two lives, um, and I don't know, the thing is, is that I probably have to get done. I'm better. I'm glad you're better. Um, but I'm going to, I have to do the My Other's Keeper and StreamYard because that's what I save my guests for. 
Um, and eventually I'm going to go over to StreamYard altogether. Yes, he was. I hope he wasn't bombarded. I really hope so. Um, you know, it's hard. Um, it's hard when somebody has to tell that. I'm not, I'm not looking forward. I didn't look forward to, to Wednesday's night show. Um, did I come on Thursday? I can't remember if I did or not. I don't think I did. Um, I think I was planning to come on Thursday and I felt that I couldn't. Um, I may have done a short. I don't think I came on Thursday because it really, just from my perspective of doing that show on Wednesday and having to walk down those that that road again about what happened with my ex-husband, um, I was exhausted the next day. I, I was really tired. Um, and no, we were busy. I didn't, I don't think I came on yesterday. Um, but I was really, really tired. I may have come on. I don't even remember. Um, but I was really tired. Uh, just the thought about doing that show, I was tired the day before it because you're having to walk down that memory lane. And I, um, okay, I will keep that in mind for tomorrow. Because I know where my tail end is going to be. In the bed, crocheting until it's time to do my other's keeper. Um, and I know for myself, it was hard. Because I don't want to go back. Now, I told my daughter tonight, we were sitting around the table, and we just happened to bring up the subject. And I said, just so you know, there was, I talked about what I felt I could talk about. I didn't talk about everything. Because you know everything. People around this table know everything that happened. But everything that, but the world does not need to know everything. And so I tried to walk a very fine line with, with giving people information and, and really putting a voice to this domestic violence without walking so far to say here's everything but it was still hard and the show I'm doing with surviving together um I know people may say to me well that that really isn't considered an essay but to me it I finally got to the point where I was able to my therapist said you need to acknowledge that as that. Even if it was the littlest of thing, you need to acknowledge it as that. And it was it ended up being very freeing. But talking about it is not going to be an easy cakewalk. Because what people need to remember is no matter what the severity of the trauma is, you still may be living with things, you know, uh, 20 years later. And so, it, to me, it's important to, first of all, tell the story as a warning to some degree for people to say, look what can happen when you when things are allowed to happen this way, that they'll still affect you you know, 20 years, more, probably 30 years later in life. Parents, don't take this stuff with a grain of salt. You have to stand in the gap for your kids when even the slightest thing is happening that could make it progress even more. Oh, acknowledging is so hard. And like, you know, we were, we both Kelly and I are survivors. Um, I've totally forgiven my ex-husband. Uh, I wish him nothing but the best. I don't want to be on here bashing him. But I also don't want to be on here not telling the truth. And I know the truth. I know I had my part. But the way I was treated, I didn't deserve to, deserve 
to be treated that way. And for Tommy to be vulnerable in front of all the people he has, he has a lot more people than I do, or that were watching that show on Wednesday, it was, um, you know, amazing and difficult to watch because we all care and we all love him. But if it helps, that's why, you know, um, Kelly and I wanted to talk about it because if it helps one person, it helps one person. It help, helps one, you know, one young lady watching this going, wait a minute, hold it, I'm seeing signs of stuff. Then... Yeah, it's hard, um, Sandy, but talking about it, if it helps one young lady that's watch, going through it, going, wait a minute, um, I need to, um, I see something happening, and I don't need to be walking down this path, then rightfully so. Now, I figured Monday, somebody was asking in the lifeboat about... Um, about food addiction so I thought I'll start I'll have a uh, we'll have a discussion on that on Monday um, it is something that I realized last week I'm kind of falling back into a little bit and I'm gonna ask you all to hold me accountable um, I was down 25 pounds less than what I am now after Christina's wedding and things have happened and I've gained that back and I don't I want to get back to where I was at her wedding and go even further I know what I need to do but I don't need to lean on food because I've got friends so when I'm feeling those you know the the lies that come into your head that say oh you're going to be comforting and you're not going to hurt and all this kind of stuff I've got friends I can go to say wait a minute I'm struggling right now. Those questions I have to go back in my head going, why am I eating? Am I eating because I'm hungry? Am I eating because I need to fuel my body? Or am I eating because I'm trying to cover something up? And um, I hope to find somebody on the YouTubes. Um, I'm going to be looking uh, to see if I can find somebody that maybe has some, uh, some expertise in that area that can come on and talk but I also think somebody that's walked through it is helpful to people on the other end because sometimes when you not that we don't need experts and not that we don't need people that have knowledge about this we certainly do but it is very helpful when you have people that kind of say yeah walk through those shoots I've been down that road I know exactly what it's like and um Deal, message me, yep. I went through it uh, last week. It was it was uh, last week. It was Thursday to Monday. And it was a short time, but man alive, it put me in a real... I was not in a good headspace. It has since worked itself out. Um, I had uh, people in the situation that came to an apology, you know, apologized to me. But the whole thing from start to finish was just them old tapes came coming back. And I'm like, I, I, I did good by leaving and going to the Amish country and getting away and, and changing, you know, um, changing the scene. But when my husband and I were done with dinner, I got to have dessert. And I like, I, I really didn't need it, but I wanted it. Well, why did I want it? Well, it's probably because I was hurting and I didn't want to deal with it. Um, so, and and he, and here's this, Miss Dragon. I, I, I'd be glad to have you on one day. We can talk about it because uh, you deal with the chronic pain. I applaud you when you go hiking. What happens with me, too, is that there are days like tomorrow where I'd like, I'd like to go for a walk. But... I just may be too sore to do anything extensive. So then you have the fibromyalgia side where I've ha I mean, I can't remember if it was Wednesday. It was Wednesday. 
sorry. It was Wednesday, and I was t- I was I I was tired, and we were going to do that show with Kelly, and I'm like, oh, I could not even stay awake. It was like t- one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, I am standing, literally trying to plug this into the computer to schedule the live, and I was sitting there going, I was so tired. I felt like I was on a boat. And I thought, I am so nauseous. I've got to go lay down for it. And I slept for another two hours. I was really tired. And uh, I got up and I thought, okay, now I've got to get my stuff down that I have penciled into my my thing. See, I pencil all my stuff in my journal, in my um, in my schedule, because if I need to erase something. And I went through and said, okay, mom, let's get going. And she took one look at me and she said, Mary, let's just find something small to do. Just take a half an hour. And, um, yeah, it would, it would be fine. We could do it in the middle of the day. Um, but I think that I'd like to try to do a panel of people. It was mentioned that I should do a panel of people that have fibromyalgia. So I would look into that. I know you, you deal with that, but, um, she just looked at me and she goes, we're going to go find something small to do for a half an hour. And we did, we spent about 45 minutes cleaning out um, and straightening up the den area of our house. I couldn't handle the garage. And then she looked at me and she said, it's time for a cup of tea and it's time for you to rest for a while until you're alive. Um, but I was so tired. So getting out and walking that day was like, I don't have the energy to do this. Yep. We do need others. And my husband looked at me the same thing and said, what are you doing? You need to go lay down. You look, you look absolutely exhausted. It was all over my face. Oh, I've had those days. Oh, I don't know what it was. And I literally could not stop sleeping. I was just so tired. The fibromyalgia just weighs on you. We need people that will show us that we need rest. We need people to show us that we're tired. We need people to say, listen, you need to, to take care of yourself because part of taking yourself, taking care of yourself physically is taking your that, 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 taking care of yourself mentally. And, and, and that's just part of it. What, what gets to me sometimes is just, I get frustrated with myself because I'm saying, I don't like this. I want it to. I want to get going. I want to do this. I want to do that. I don't want to do this. And I have to force myself. And it's not fun. Like tomorrow. Any plans I had for tomorrow? Nope. They're going away. They're not even in the plan book anymore. I know what I have to do. In order to do my live tomorrow night, I need to take breaths because I've had a very busy day today. And then I'll have a busy day on Sunday. We have church and then we'll come back. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying not to yawn. You don't have fibromyalgia, but I can relate to that. I am horrible at being sick. I will try to get up and work before I am ready. You don't have fibro, but you deal with chronic pain, right? As I've been on your lives and you said you've been hurting. You know, you're sore and you hurt. And, and so I know you deal with chronic pain. Um, but. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Kristen. I'm, I'm looking at Miss Dragon. Yep, they're not happy when they when we don't move enough. That's true. Um, saving spoons for activities. I like that. Yeah. Ex- yes, your joints hurt more if you're not moved. However, if you're already sore and then you go overdue it makes it worse so it's a it's a it's a balancing act gone haywire because on the one side you want to move because if you don't move 
then you're sore. But if you overdo, then it's like this. It's like, okay, which one am I going to do? You know, and sometimes you have to just rest. And there has been days where literally getting in out of bed or trying to walk, I've got tears coming down my face because it's just so painful. So it's like, those are the days when your, your body, when you've exerted, like I know I've exerted a little bit more than usual today. And so tomorrow my body muscles are going to be really sore. So I have to rest. I have to rest those muscles so I can get up and do things. It's just, I'll be down for a, a, a week and the last minute plans are, are a no go. Yep. Internet inter chronicle hypertension comes on and goes lately. I've been dealing with it the most in remission. I'll be praying. I'll be praying it stays away. It's just a balancing act. It's a balancing act of, of you know, how far are you going to push it? How far are you going to push it? That's all it is. It's a balancing act. I, I've, I, when you first get fibromyalgia and you first get stuck with chronic pain, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kristen. Um, when you first have it, you push. You push your body because you don't realize that you need to be paying attention to the little warning signs going on. Um, and you, you don't, you, you're angry enough at it. You don't want to be told that you have to rest. You're too young to just rest. You don't want to be told it. So you go through a little bit of anger and frustration. And then what you start doing is learning your body. And your body will tell you very clearly, and I know my body enough now, when it says you need to be crocheting and you need to be resting. Not that I'm, not that I'm in bed all day not getting up. I am. I am getting up and moving and doing things, but I'm not overexerting myself. Like tomorrow, for me to get up and go for a walk even around the block may tips put me on the tipser for a, even more sore of a day, if that's a word, on Sunday. Do I need to get up and move around throughout the day? Absolutely. But how far am I going to push myself where somebody that's not dealing with fibromyalgia could say, oh, well, I'll just... Um, I, you know, I'll just go for a walk and I'll take some Tylenol. Well, this girl don't just take Tylenol. And, um, that's one thing I thought I'm going to, I'm going to message Tommy. And I thought it would be a really good discussion to have on my channel about addiction and dependency. Um, so I don't just take Tylenol because Tylenol is something but water to me it does nothing. Um, so I take my, the medication prescribed and I take it as I'm supposed to do it. But going for a walk is going to push me over. It's going to push me over. And so it's not worth that push when I need to say, okay, getting up and moving throughout the day in my home is okay. But going out and taking a walk may just be just a little bit too much if my body's pushed the day before too much. I want to look, I know uh, my other's keeper, she did, uh, her friend did a chair yoga. I want to take a look at that. And I, I, I think Tommy's going to eventually put up on his channel uh, the yoga for the chair. Because for somebody like me, some of those positions, yeah, they're like Tic Tacs. Uh, they don't work for nothing. Um for me, some of those positions, 
I, I wouldn't get back up again if he, if I got down. I'm not getting back up. I couldn't do some of them that he does. But I think if he did some chair yoga, it would be good to be able to, you know, see how they could be done without all the bending and the some of the some of the back ones would be a little difficult. Yep. I think it'd be a great topic. So I'm gonna see if he would come on my channel. I'm sure he will. Um no I do take Tylenol if I know that I don't want to take my medication that can sometimes make me sleepy. I will have Tylenol if I'm gonna be out and about and have Tylenol on hand that I could take. But for my daily uh my daily level to keep my pain at a certain level every every day where I'm not going up to like a nine you know seven or eight I have to be on my 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 medication and uh people that want to criticize me for being on it have all the fun in the world but you're not living in my pain what irritates me is I have a friend of mine my mom has a friend and she had a doctor, it was a pain management doctor, who um, wanted her to go for some kind of, I don't even remember what it was, some kind of uh, procedure. She had already done the procedure before. And the previous procedure gave her pain, it was worse after she was done with it than before. And um, so he just said, sorry. Here's your last bout of medication. She was using her medication as directed. She was, she, she's like me. I put it in my phone. She wrote it down on a piece of paper in a log. And, uh, and, uh, he just refused to see her. She didn't go through the procedure that she did before that made the pain 10 times worse the last time she did it. Well, she also deals with some mental health issues. So somebody like her, who is not, tough as nails as I can be sometimes. And I've got the sweetest pain management doctor. I'm telling you, I've ne I've had, I've had a couple of this one's the best out of the bunch. And, um, you know, she just, she just got all upset. Rightfully so. Thankfully her kidney doctor was able to write the script, but I thought, how is this fair that you're, that you are, um, you know, you're not listening to your patient. That she did this procedure you wanted her to do and it made her pain worse. So you're going to threaten if she doesn't do this procedure again to make her pain worse than what it was now that you're not going to write the medication and don't bother coming to see me. I think that's very irresponsible. And she didn't have, she didn't know what she was going to do. She was trying to go down on her medication. She's walking on a walker. I mean, she's, she has legit pain. And I thought, Oh goodness, I would have been, whew, no way. I had one doctor who looked at me like you couldn't believe. My husband said it took everything for me not to go across the, the room. He said I was just so upset with the way you were treated. Sandy, I've heard the term, if you truly need it, you won't get addicted because you know you can't live with it. Amen. That is absolutely, that is abs absolutely, um, couldn't have said it better, Miss Dragon. Lifetime of pain. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. My medication is like gold because I can't take Lyrica, I can't take Sebolta, and I can't take Abapin, which are the three medications they usually will throw at a fibromyalgia patient. I can't take any of them. So I know that the medication I have is gold and I wouldn't want to experience life without it because I know I'd be in bed in agony. Like what I was able to do today, it had never been able to happen today. If I didn't have my medication to take, no way. That is, that's the best, that's the best, best. I'm stealing that line, Miss Dragon. That is awesome. That is, that is it. That is it. Because it, and see, I, I have gotten, I, I said to my husband, I ever, you ever see me have a problem with this medication? It's, it's yours. You can lock it up in the safe and I will come to you for my medication 
um, every time. D it just as, as, as uh, I have that protection. I have that backup. I haven't needed it. Now, the doctors, when, I, when they wrote me my prescription last, they gave me a thing of Narcan, and that's why I said on Lifo that I, I, no, I don't think I'll ever need it, but I got it because at least I have it in case I need to give it to anybody else. Well, yeah, Sandy, that does happen. The people that get addicted and then they're like Tommy and they wind up on heroin. And that's terrible. I And see, I've had addicts in my family. So, believe me, when I, have, I had one and we were distributing the medication to her. And if she knew that her pill was going to be taken at 4.30 in the morning, she was knocking at her door at 4.15 waiting for her pill. She woke herself up to have that pill. I mean, it was ridiculous. I can't understand that because that could be there. My medication can be there. It's not calling my name. But if there's mint, chips, mint chocolate chip ice cream in the refrigerator, oh, it's all she wrote. It's gone within a day. I mean, it's gone within a couple days. It's not lasting. Or if there's Swiss cake rolls, it's gone. But my medication can be over there and it doesn't. Nope. It doesn't. I'm, you're allergic to a mist dragon. Cymbalta. I was on for several years for depression. It sucks. It leaves your body so quickly. In the morning before I took it, the next one I feel like I had the flu. Oh, getting off Cymbalta sucked. Well, I'm allergic. And then they said, well, if you're allergic to Cymbalta, Lyrica is just a cousin to it, so we're not even going to try. And Gabapentin wanted me to unlive, I wanted to unlive, unalive myself on Gabapentin within one pill. So, no, I ain't touching that one with the 10th pole. No, 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 no. I don't want to go down that one again. That one was a bad one. So, in the, when my husband saw a rheumatologist recently, those were the three medications they threw at him. Well, guess what? Usually, if Josh can't take a medication, I can't. I don't understand it. He can't take Cymbalta, Lyrica, or Gabapentin. And he has fibromyalgia, too. But he has a different level. Neither I do. So I'm about ready to head off here. I don't know if I'll make it to Chow's tonight or Cricket's tonight. Kristen, you drop that link. Miss Dragon, you drop that link if you want to. I don't know if there's anybody in here other than us. But please feel free if you'd like to. Lex, Lexapro at 30. I've heard that, that it will gain weight like a nothing. Yep. Well, Mike, my, my, my doctor says, he says, you're on a very low dose. He said, you're not you know, not having to raise your medicine needed. You're doing very well with it. He said, we're not changing what works. Works for you. It works for you. It may not. It, the, the thing that gets to them is that it's not what's common for everybody else. Kristen's learning. She became a mod, so she's going to learn. If you go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you here. You, just, just for practice. If you go to your channel and you'll see those three bot three dots by your channel name and you click that, you should be able to click share. And we're going to have Kristen practice it because I made her a mod because I want to see her channel grow. Um, and we're trying to get Miss Dragon's channel to grow and so forth. Um, but uh, the, he, you know, my doctor said it's not a typical response to fibromyalgia. But they don't normally throw this stuff. 
at people with fibromyalgia. But what works for me may not work for somebody else. Who It doesn't matter. It works for me. So let's not try to rewrite my... I'm unique. It's just what works. And I'm thankful it does. I'm thankful they found something because I, I, I don't know where I'd be without something. Pain is no joke. It is tiring. We're waiting for Kristen to drop her link because I want her to practice. I want her to practice so she can say, I did it and I know how to do it now. She's caught live a couple times and I'm so proud of her. She's just growing up. Good to see you growing. Oh, she did it. Yes. You did it. You did it. Good job. You dropped a link. You dropped a link. It's not that difficult. <laughs> All peer support here. We're just dropping links. But I, I, I'm serious. Please let the community know. I, I'm going to check. I'm going to see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to go see where, where it takes me because I can. Nope, that's the lifeboat. Okay, wait a minute. That's the lifeboat. So you did that one, but I'm talking about you dropping your link. So hold on a second because now i got to go back. That's from earlier, Mary. Let's see, let me go back to this. And you tell the kids to pick up their room. And they drink. Read the pin comment. About when Easter was done? I'll have to read. Do you want me to read it out loud? Miss Dragon? Because I can play it while we're on here if you want me to. Let me let me put let me show. Because she dropped she dropped the lifeboat link. But I want her to see. Okay, I don't know if you can see. Kristen, do you see yours here? right okay and you see there's three buttons on the side of this of your name right here and if you click there you'll see a bottom button that says share and when you click the share you'll do copy link and then you take that and you can drop that right in the live let's see what miss dragon I'm gonna, gonna pull a cricket tonight. Hold on a minute. And that's how you go in, and you'll see, because you drop the lifeboat link, that's how you drop a link. So you see the difference in my link to yours is yours says your name. So that's your channel getting dropped. So that's how you go into everybody's channel and actually drop it. For, for giggles and laughs, let's see what... Um, Mrs. Give me a minute. I gotta turn up my phone now. Hold on a second. We're gonna listen to Miss Dragon. When Easter's over, and you tell the kids to pick up their room, and they drag their feet, remind them they picked up 45 eggs in less than a minute. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's a good one, Miss Dragon. That's a good one. That was funny. That was funny. That was funny. That was a good one. That was a good one. Good 
You know, when I was down in the Amish country, I forgot to post this. Guess who I saw when I was down there? Is it on here someplace? Where was it? Dude, I never guessed who I saw when I was down in the Amish country. Do you see Elvis? It's a washed out one, but there he was. It was him in the jail suit. And this is a picture I posted on my thing, but this is a picture. That's a picture of me and my grandmother that I'll be talking about tomorrow. And that is my dad. Pin com oh, pin comment from the eight-year-old. Okay. Okay, let me, let me go back. It was still funny. I'm glad I played it. It was still funny. All right. We got to do the pin comment. Hold on. Yeah, dude. Okay, she wants. Okay, now I get it. My mom sent me this. I'm eight. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, that was my grandmother. She, uh, she, uh, she was, she was. She was, she was something. Let's just put it that way. That's all I can say about my grandma. She was something. God love her. That's all I can say. But, um, this was her again, too. That's my grandmother. That was Nancy. That's my mom. And that's my dad. That was in Daytona Beach is where she lived. And we would go up and visit her. And uh, she uh, would go up and visit her. And um, I remember that Matt, that um, Cricket, that uh, Cricket was talking about the picture I sent her. Yep, this was the one that I sent her. <laughs> I thought it was perfect. I said, you need to go to Aldi and find out if they have one. That was the mat. I, I sent her that picture. I said, here. Oh, was, I got to show you all this. This was the video. I sent it to her yesterday. And I said to her, um, I sent to her, I sent her this. And I said, was this most of your days? She goes, yes. So is this how you felt most of the days? I don't. Look at that dog. <laughs> And this was like Wednesday, but I'm like, does this feel like you most of the days? It's talking. Anytime I laugh, I just laugh. I said to her, is that most of your day? She goes, yep, it is. Oh, I thought that dog was a hoot. I thought that dog just got me laughing. There's a little girl someplace, and she... Oh, my goodness. Anytime I wanted to laugh. Oh, let me see if I can find it real quick. I don't know if you have seen them. But if you haven't, if I can pull them up. How, oh, what is it? Sap. If you haven't had a chance to watch them, they are just... Is it S-A-F? So they're here... This young man, let me just praise this before I go out. This young man, he needs, a, he needs, I'm telling you what, he has just, he has a brother with Down syndrome. And if you need to have yourself, have a, if you're having a bum day, just go to their, if you go on Facebook, it's S A F. I E R. And I'm telling you what, he is he him and his brother. If you're having a bad day, you just go on and watch these two. And they will lighten your day. This young man and his brother, and they often he wants them always to wear matching shirts. And I'm gonna tell you something. He is just uh, he it's just, he needs a medal, this young man. Um, 
His brother is Gaby, and his bro his name I think is um. Oh, what is his name again? I forgot. I have to go back and look. Um. But it, it's just such a delight. Um, to watch the two of them together. Anytime you need a uh, have a little bit of a sad day, just go watch them. I don't know if they have a YouTube. They may. Let me see if I can get it on the YouTube. And Sandy, I'm going to tell you to do this too. This lady I saw in um, Flor Florida several times. And um, her name is um, Jeannie Robertson. And any time you need a story that's going to lift you up or make you laugh, go up, we'll go watch her. She's hysterical. Man to the grocery store, uh, jumping off of a bridge, bungee jumping naked. I mean, she's got a hoot, hoot, hoot of shows. She, is, she has since gone and been with the Lord, but she is just a hoot. And, um... She really is. And she, anytime you need to be lifted up, just go to, um, go watch her and, and just watch the shows. This is this young man, and I'll post it here for people. This, this young man and his little brother. Oh my goodness. It is just so cute. He'll want him to twin. Gaby will want him to twin, twin with his brother. And he'll come out and he'll say, please. And I'll give him a little kiss on the nose. And he'll make this laugh. And it's just, you know, I give a big, huge, um, you know, big, huge something to the to the brother that, that uh, um, you know, is sticking around for, you know, is, is taking such good care of, with his brother and loving him. And so sweet to see. Oh, they're just delightful. But Jeannie Robertson's a hoot. She's a hoot and a half. She's got tons of stories on there. And any time I remember in 2013 when it was like one thing after another, even though I heard the story about the man with the grocery, going to the, sending a man to the grocery store, I watched it because it made me laugh. And so I watched it again and it was such a hoot. It was such a hoot. But I'm going to head off here. I'm going to go get ready for some, uh, ready for bed. I don't know if I'm going to make it to um, Cricket's Live tonight. But I think the five uh, yawn limit is up. <laughs> Kristen, are you going live tonight? <laughs> or is it going to be one of those random things? I said, text me or message me and then I will see if I'm awake. <laughs> The rate I'm going, I may not be. But anyway, uh, you know, those that are in the community of the lifeboat, please know that it, that if I can um, and, you know, I need to hop on, that I will. If at all possible, I will do so. I will. I'm going to sleep well. You haven't decided yet? Well, like I said, just message me. And say, I'm going on. And if I'm awake, I will hop on. You know that. You may just do a short video. I need to catch up. I need to catch up. But I'm going to. I'm going to sleep well. And, uh, and uh, hopefully sleep in. <laughs> yep, you have the freedom. You'll probably be asleep. I became a member on her channel last night. I was gifted a membership by De uh, Denver Stevo. I was so excited. But she's got to stop the sandwich bit. Because every time I go on, I want a sandwich. I was thinking of a song like the sandwich in the morning, sandwich in the evening, sandwich at supper. <laughs> I can't figure out a way to make a song out of that and send it to her. Oh, boy. Anyway. All right, I'm going to schedule a live for tomorrow, and I will talk to you all later. Have a good night. I'm glad I could come in and we could talk, and it would help to lessen anybody and give them connection. That was the that was the point of it. Yep, and I'm going to turn them on too. And believe me, there will probably be an Elvis one in my membership. <laughs> I was thinking, I, 
<coughs> Excuse me. I was thinking I could do a thank you, thank you very much membership. That'd be cute. I'll get there. I'm determined to get this this thing off the ground here. I will get it. Even at my puny little 250 wash hours, I will get it. You kind of want a sandwich now? I don't want a sandwich. I'm full. <laughs> I had a big dinner. I'm full. So anyway, I'm going to schedule a live for Monday or for tomorrow for the Saturday with my other's keeper. And the problem is, is that I would probably schedule two a live for Monday. But I, because I'm using StreamYard for Saturday show, I don't know if I schedule one in StreamYard and one of here, if it's going to conflict. So I will schedule the live for Saturday by itself. And then I, after the live is over with tomorrow, I will go ahead and schedule a live for um, Monday as we try to talk about food addictions. So I will schedule that after I do my other's keeper tomorrow. So I hope that you will join me. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, Patreon, I'll have to look into that. I will have to look into that. But anyway, have a good day. Good, good day. Oh boy. I'm frozen now. <laughs> good night. My computer's saying it's time for you to go to bed. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Stay connected. I'm glad I could kind of come on and, and do a little bit of connection tonight for everybody. Um, thank you. Have a good night. Stay connected. And remember, God loves you. And so do I. And thankful for all the support. And this was fun tonight. Jamming, crocheting, talking, and, and staying connected. That's the whole point of it. Please join me tomorrow and have a restful night. Sweet dreams, everybody.